Okay, let's take a look at evolution. So as we start with evolution, we start with the father of evolution, and that's Charles Darwin. Darwinism is a theory of biological evolution developed by Darwin. Um, he lived from 1809 to 1882. You don't need to know that, but just to give you an idea of what the time period would be. Uh, and his theory of evolution stated that all species of organism arise and develop through the natural selection of small inherited variations that increase the individual's ability to compete, survive, and reproduce. So the big word there was natural selection. So we're going to go into that some more. Darwin published his theory of evolution with compelling evidence in his 1859 book on the origin of species, overcoming scientific rejection of earlier concepts of mutation of species. By the 1870s, the scientific community and much of the general public had accepted evolution as a fact. However, many favored competing explanations, and it was not until the emergence of the modern evolutionary synthesis from the 1930s to the 1950s that a broad consensus developed in which natural selection was the basic mechanism of evolution. Darwin, Darwin's scientific discovery is a unifying theory of the life sciences, explaining the diversity of life. Natural selection is one of the cornerstones of modern biology. The concept which described natural selection as analogous to artificial selection, a process by which animals and plants, with traits considered desirable by human breeders, are systematically favored for reproduction. Okay, so let's get into natural selection here a little bit. Okay, so in natural selection, we have four things that we're looking at. We want to see variation in traits, differential reproduction, heredity, and then an end result. Okay, so in this example, we're saying that there are, we start off there are brown ants and there are red ants. Okay, so that's the variation in traits, right? There's some, we look, the brown ants and the red ants look different because they're a different color. Okay, and then we see the differential reproductions. All individuals, or in this case ants, did not reproduce to their full capacity. So say that the red ants get eaten by birds more often than the brown ants for some reason. Okay, and then we have heredity. The surviving brown ants have baby brown ants because this trait has a genetic basis. And then we see the end result. The brown coloration, which allows ants to have more offspring, becomes more common in the population. If this process continues, eventually there will only be brown ants. So the ant example is fairly uh, simple and straightforward. Um, perhaps this would be more interesting if it was uh, something like uh, physical strength in males, right? So at one point, that could have been necessary uh, to um, defend themselves and defend uh, family and uh, their wives. Um, and as that happened, is you would all of a sudden see, um, right, so you have a variation in traits that we start off, some people are weaker, some are, are physically stronger, right? Uh, you would see the differential reproduction of the stronger uh, guys uh, pr reproducing more, and the heredity, all of a sudden you would see more uh, more physically strong uh, guys as generations turned over, and the end result would be uh, a population filled with more physically strong males than had existed uh, previous generations. So anyway, kind of interesting. That's natural selection. Okay, uh, adaptations. An adaptation is a feature that is common in a population because it provides some improved function. Adaptations are well fitted to their function and are produced by natural selection. So that's a key sentence right there. A lot of times people get confused between adaptations and natural selection. Right? Um, natural selection has much more to do with reproduction. Adaptation uh, is what you see. So let's get into this a little bit more. Adaptations can take many forms. A behavior that allows better evasion of predators. A protein that functions better at body temperature. 
or an anatomical feature that allows the organism to access a valuable new resource. All of these could be adaptations. Many of the things that impress us most in nature are thought to be adaptations. Long before Darwin, farmers and breeders were using the idea of selection to cause major changes in the feature of their plants and animals over the course of decades. Farmers and breeders allowed only the plants and animals with desirable characteristics to reproduce, causing the evolution of farm stock. This process is called artificial selection because people, rather than nature, select which organisms get to reproduce. Okay, so uh, definitely need to be able to say what is the difference between artificial selection and natural selection. That's a pretty common uh, test question. We have genetic variation. This refers to diversity in gene frequencies. Genetic variation can refer to differences between individuals or differences between populations. A mutation is the ultimate source of genetic variation, but mechanisms such as sexual reproduction and genetic drift contribute to it as well. And so that leads us to genetic drift, right? Certainly less significant, all the stuff we talked about before are there, but you can get a genetic drift question. Genetic drift is a change in the gene pool of a small population, and that's key. It's only for small populations. It takes place strictly by chance. Genetic drift can result in genetic traits being lost from a population or becoming widespread in a population without respect to the survival or reproductive values of the alleles involved. Right, so meaning natural selection isn't making the differences uh, in traits show up. Genetic drift has much more to do with chance and has to do with a small population. So a random statistical effect, genetic drift can occur only in small isolated populations in which the gene pool is small enough that chance events can change its makeup substantially. In larger population, any specific allele is carried by so many individuals it is almost certain to be transmitted by some of them unless it is biologically unfavorable. 